hello everyone. Welcome to Bead Table Tuesday. I'm Heather Powers of Humble Beads, bead maker, jewelry designer, author, illustrator, and your all around creative muse. It's my job to get those beads off of your bead table and into some jewelry. If you're here, say hello. I would love to hear from you guys. I see Anita and Kaylin are here. M and Lisa. Hello everyone. So today we are going to be revisiting an older project that I did way back when I first started doing videos. <laughs> and in fact, I think it's only on Facebook and not on YouTube of the first crochet um, project that I did. And um, I had terrible lighting and it, it was as my... I, um, young adults say it was very potato. <laughs> so, all right. So we're going to have a little redo of it. Hi, Susan, Katie, Gina, Debbie, Sharon, Candy. Hello, hello, guys. So I'm going to give you guys all the ins and outs on how to make a multi-strand crocheted bracelet. And I did two of them for samples here. I did a um, one that has four. Oh, that one looks a little messy. Looked better in the photo <laughs> when, I, when it wasn't all just flopped on there. But oh, I won't fight with it. There we go. And of course, gravity helps when it's on your wrist. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about what materials you're going to need. I'm going to show you guys the basic techniques and give you any little tips and tricks that I have for doing the um, crocheted bracelets. I think I, I found my groove yesterday. I will tell you guys, though, I know how to bead crochet like I know how to swim, which is I can doggy paddle to get to the shore to save my life but it's not pretty to watch. <laughs> and that sums up my bead crochet. I can, um, I can do it. I can make a bracelet, but I'm sure people who really know how to bead crochet are going to just be um, shaking their heads. <laughs> Hi, Cassandra, Cindy. Oh, I love it when you guys call us humblers. <laughs> so sweet. And Maggie, Julie, nice to have you guys. Okay. So First thing you're going to ask me is um, these little buttons. I made them. So um, I have them in two different colors. They're not going to be on the website until tomorrow, though, because we're um, fixing up some inventory on the website. And I don't want to add anything new on there until I have all the old stuff taken care of. So, <laughs> so we have it in green gold with a um, frosty finish. Or uh, it's a purple gold, uh, purple silver, sorry, with um, the white finish too. And then I have round ones also, which I thought were fun. And my favorite buttons, which I don't know, they're hard to find, are the companies going out of business, which were the Tierra cast ones. These were my inspiration for my buttons. So these were. Um, from Tierra Cast, you can find them. Some people still have a good stash of them, but Tierra Cast is going out of business, so I don't think these will be available anymore. And so these are copper ones, so that would work too if you have any of those in your stash. Or you could also use, um, you know, check glass buttons, whatever you got around in your stash will work. This is a good stash busting kind of project. So here I have like a really beautiful, oops, check glass button that would work too. All right, the most important ingredient of the project is the thread. And we're going to be using Ceylon thread, and this is the regular size. And um, I think the best, the place where I buy mine is beadshop.com. So Kate, um, she has just an array of really beautiful colors. And so, and they're only like $5 a spool. They're very inexpensive and, um, I recommend just picking up a few colors. You'll, I think um, this one, it took me like, I don't know, I've had it for like 
four or five years. <laughs> it's finally getting smaller. So they last a really long time too. You don't use that much of it with a project. And then we have some charms on here. Some charms are from Humble Beads. And these snowflakes just arrived in the mail today from my friend Cassandra from Beads to Live By. So I think you need to pop over to Beads to Live By and pick up a, a dozen of those. <laughs> Yes, I am so sad to see Tierra cast leave too. So, C Lon, the letter C L O N, C Lon thread, and it's the regular size. So they have like a fine and a regular. So you want to get the regular one. And the other thing that you'll have to maybe go procure is a crochet hook, and this one is a size eight. 1.5 millimeter. I think you could use one up, one that's one step up too, that's just a little bit bigger, and that would work too, but this just happens to be the one that I have in my stash, and it worked very well. Okay, you're going to need to pre-string your beads, and I used a big eye needle so these are needles that um, open up really super wide and you can stick your um, thread in there and then you're going to string your beads. Every four beads is going to give you one inch. So um, you just have to keep that in mind and decide how long you want your bracelet to be. I know I want mine to go around four times and so um, so that's 32 inches because my bracelet size is eight inches. So I needed um, 32 times four, whatever that math is. <laughs> I just counted 32 times. So that was, that was all I did. Um, yeah, so every inch is four beads. So do your math, decide how long you want your bracelet. And that's how many you're going to have to um, string on there. Oh, Cindy used to make baskets with the Ceylon thread, so you do have a good stash. And a pair of sharp scissors. And um, if you have a thread zapper, that's super uh, handy to have. I went all old school and used a little um, candle lighter to uh, burn the end of my threads. <laughs> or you can use um, beading glue. And... Jermaine, fantastic question. These are size four fire polish beads. So you can use any beads to bead crochet with. And I like the size four fire polish. I like a little shine and shimmer. And also they're pretty budget friendly. So you can use four strands and it's no big deal, which is what I did for this. I have four different strands that I mixed up to make my little mix that's inside that I strung on. And get creative with the thread. The thread really changes the look of the beads. So this one I used um, a really pretty kind of, I don't know, what do you call that? Like a teal green sage color. I don't know. <laughs> Celadon. I would have to go look it up. But um, this is the color that I used on here. And I'm going to use olive on this more Christmassy bracelet. So the other ones were more wintry. Okay, I'm gonna move everything out of the way so my camera doesn't decide it wants to focus on anything else. Yes, and these again are four millimeter size beads. And you could use round, English cut. Um, I also have a few little four millimeter cornerless cube beads thrown in every mm, 20 or beads or so just to add a little bit of weight to the bracelet a little bit of metal to add some weight so i'm going to start my project by making a loop i'm going to take this thread go around and pull it through the loop So we have this little little loop there that I made. I'm gonna put that on there and tighten it up. 
And the first thing we're going to do is make the loop that goes around the button. So you have to have your button and now how big you want your loop to be. So here you can see this one. It doesn't have to be the whole size of your button if it's um, angled like this, but it definitely needs to go around the thickest part. So this one is, um, I don't know, we'll see, maybe 12 or so stitches. And these are called chain stitches that we're going to do. How you want to start, you're going to wrap it around your pinky, and then you're going to go up and over your pointer finger. So I'm going to show you guys that again. You're going to wrap it around your pinky, and then up and over your pointer finger. And you go underneath the uh, thread and pull it through. I'm going to do that again. So you're going to go underneath. So you're wrapping it around and pulling it through the loop. You guys see that nice and close? So you're going to go um, wrap it around and pull it through. And you keep this kind of taut. This is your tension. And so you want this to not be um, so tight, but you want it to be a little taut so that you'll have even tension and that will help you keep your little um, stitches similar. Sorry, fighting with my thread here. Let me take some of these things off of here so that my thread can roll around without me worrying about it. Okay, so I'm going to keep going doing these chain stitches. That's what this is called. And I want to have enough to go around whatever button I'm going to use for the project. So I'm wrapping it around and pulling it through. Wrapping it around and pulling it through. And let me just grab the sample here. I'm going to go a little bit more. My crochet hook, Kathy, is a size 9. Let me make sure. Oh, no, size 8. But I think you could go up one size larger, too, if you wanted to. And the thread I'm using, in case you guys are just... Oh, didn't mean to pull a bead down yet. The thread I'm using is Ceylon thread, the regular size. And that's the letter C L O N Ceylon. Okay. I'm gonna do one more. Okay, so this is how long I want my loop to be. And then I'm gonna go back to the first stitch that I did and stick my hook into that first thread. I'm going to make sure that little thread stays in the back and I'm going to grab onto the thread and pull it through um, the first loop uh, and the second one. I let it go. That's okay. The other thing about crocheting is um, if you accidentally let it go like that, you just pick it back up at your loop and try again. Okay, so let's try this again. So go into that first loop. All right, Heather, here we go. And I'm going to pull through the second one, too. Ah. You're supposed to do it all in one fell swoop, but I probably um, have my little stitches too tight, but that's okay. Okay, so I've made my little loop by going through and grabbing the thread through both of those stitches. 
Now you're going to drop a bead. And this is how I, I have my beads, um, like climbing up the mountain here and they're waiting <laughs> to be dropped down. This is the way I found it, that it, um, it works the best for me. And so I'm not like picking up every single bead and then I can just pull the beads down as I need them. So I have a, a little pile of these heading up over the mountain. <laughs> like that. So you guys can see how I have that going. And I'm going to pull a bead down. Then you are going to do the same stitch. I'm going to do one stitch without a bead and then drop the next bead down and one stitch with with the bead and then one stitch without the bead okay so we got one stitch with the bead one without then I'm going to drop my next bead. And also, um, um, I'm trying to have the cord so that it's giving me a little extra cord each time I do this, too. One without. Then you're going to pull your bead down. And stitch. So this is what you're going to do. And if you mess up, you'll just pull out the, um, the stitch and it just comes right out and you can redo it. No big deal. It's a very forgiving. Uh, Kelly, I do believe that the, um, Ceylon and Eslon are the same thing. I think they're probably maybe from different companies. I saw the, um, at the bead shop uh, where I get the Ceylon. The Eslon they only had in black and white, so they didn't have all the beautiful colors. Basically, you just want a polyester thread that doesn't ravel. And so, um, this is the one that's most recommended okay gotta relax calm down you don't want to have your um, beads too tight or fight with them so I'm just trying to keep this nice and even having a little bead fall down um, after the stitch that's by itself. So we have one bead that's stitched, and then we do one chain stitch, and then we add the bead. And I'm pulling my beads down when you see them go off camera <laughs> so that I have a little thread to work with. And what will happen after you're doing this for a while is that you'll find your rhythm and it will just work nice and easy for you. <laughs> um, Holly, I got the Ceylon at beadshop.com is where I ordered it. So um, beadshop.com is where I got my thread. And my crochet hook, I'm pretty sure I just picked that up at Michael's one time. It's just one of those things you have around forever once you buy it. <laughs> so maybe I'll pull this up a little bit so you guys can see my hands a little better now that you've seen the detail. So I'm giving myself some slack with the, uh, with the thread and I'm going to do one stitch, grab the bead, 
and then do my chain stitch. So it's the same stitch each time. You're just adding a bead every other stitch. And um, at Vic, for every inch of beads that you, for every inch that you want your bracelet to be, you're going to do four beads. So four beads equals one inch of crocheted bracelet. So I, um, I did 32 inches. No, I want 32 inches. <laughs> So whatever four times 32 is, that's what I did. But that's, um, you know, everybody's bracelet. You're going to, you can take a piece of string and wrap it around your wrist and see how many inches you want your bracelet to be. And then just do the math from there. But every four beads equals one inch of crocheted beadwork. So again, just pulling, so I have a little bit more thread to play with, pulling my bead down, wrapping it around and pulling it through, and then I'm going to do that again, then drop my next bead down, and pull it through. And guys, feel free to ask, um, yes, Lisa, my bracelet, I wanted it four times around. So I did um, the eight times four. So 32 inches is what I wanted my finished bracelet to be. And if there's a point where you feel like um, maybe your hands are getting like kind of cramped up or too tight, you're probably doing the tension um, too tight. See, these beads are um, so, uh, stitched in pretty loosely and um, it shouldn't hurt while you're doing this or feel like you're fighting with the beads. It should flow pretty easily. So keep that in mind. What I like to do is um, I give this a little pull so that that bead nestles in a little tighter. Yeah, I really... I don't know what it is about crocheting and knitting during the winter time, but it just feels good. <laughs> it feels like you're connected to your ancestors somehow and uh, it feels very cozy and fun. And so this is the kind of project you can just do in the living room while you're watching a Christmas movie or whatever kind of movie you like to watch this time of year. And uh, it's just a nice way to while away some winter hours. So every time you see me pull it off screen, I'm um, making my beads go down the thread a little bit more so I have a little bit more of the Ceylon thread to work with. And I'm doing one stitch after the bead and then stitching on the bead. And these are simple chain stitches. And feel free to ask questions, guys, because um, I'm just going to do a few inches of this and then I'll show you how I end it. So just going along my merry way. And again, Ceylon thread is what I used. I have a eight, size eight crochet hook here, and I'm using four millimeter fire polish beads. And I had just started practicing, oh, about two days ago for this project, and after about the fourth bracelet that I did, I felt like I, I found my rhythm. <laughs> so it takes a while for it to feel comfortable. And now I can do it pretty, um, 
pretty effortlessly. Lisa, you've been enjoying watching Fargo, and so, yeah, a nice, uh, cozy activity with the murder mystery. <laughs> that always a dark comedy. That always good mix of opposites. So again, when you see me doing that, I'm giving myself a little extra thread um, for my beads to slide on. And we're doing a stitch without the bead and then a stitch with the bead. So just pulling that crochet hook through after you've wrapped it around your thread. It's a pretty simple process. There's no keeping track or um, count of things after you've counted out your amount of beads that you want to string. So you can just get those done and then string along. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much for posting. Yeah, we got a size 8 hook, Ceylon thread, regular, and 4 millimeter polish beads. And th this goes by pretty quickly, you guys. I'm, I've got quite a bit done already. And again, this is like after I've done a few of them. So it takes, it takes a little bit of time to find your groove with it. Most important part is keeping this tight enough, but, um, having it loose enough so that it moves on with your hand here. So you want to keep this tension of your thread kind of tight. I'm sure there's a way to do this like super seamlessly and that people who really know how to crochet can really whip these out really quickly. <laughs> and uh, these are super fun gifts because you can customize the little charms and buttons to, um, to match your uh, recipient's tastes or <clears throat> what they're interested in. <laughs> Yay, Sue, I'm glad you could make the live. We're just crocheting over here. <laughs> oh, good, Susan. I think you're really going to love this. Um, it's very fun and relaxing, and it has like so much wonderful texture with the beads. And who doesn't love a stack of um, bracelets? Like, this would look good with stacked up with all sorts of other bracelets too. You know, some nice arm candy. A nice stack of um, bracelets would go really fun with this. Just move it along here. So I wrap it, the thread goes around the crochet hook gets pulled down underneath the bead. I'm going to wrap the thread around the crochet hook and pull it through the loop. And I'm going to drop down the other bead, wrap it around, pull it through the loop on the bottom. Here I'm adjusting my thread again so I have extra thread. <clears throat> Letting one bead drop at a time. Oop, don't forget your chain stitch afterwards. 
So I'm doing one stitch without the bead <clears throat> and then one stitch with the bead. And uh, just try not to have this boring for you guys. <laughs> so let's see how much I have here. I've really done like quite a bit in just a few minutes with you guys. So um, guys are asking again. This is a size eight crochet hook, Ceylon thread, and four millimeter fire polish beads. So, um, let's see, I think I'll do a few more inches so I can get this wrapped around three times. So let me go through this pretty quickly. So around the All right, we got the thread around my pinky, and then it goes up and over your pointer finger with the beads ready to roll down. You go around once and pull through the loop, and then you do it again, but this time you have the bead down there. And you're gonna just keep going. Once, once, you, um, once you figure out the chain stitch, which is really simple. Then this zips along pretty quickly. And I think the hardest part was figuring out how to comfortably hold this so that I wasn't having to pick up every single bead and put it up over my finger. <laughs> Took me a while to figure that part out. Okay, and you're keeping the tension pretty um, consistent, so you don't want to have some that are really tight and some that are really loose. And so having this nice and taut will help keep that tension pretty even. And by tension, I mean the tension of this thread. And I do have a few cornerless cube beads on here too. I like to have a little bit of metal mixed in to give the uh, bracelet a little bit of weight because it's it's pretty lightweight and so it needs a little a little substance. <laughs> and I mixed four different colors for this design and just then randomly strung them on. I didn't have any um, any pattern other than trying not to um, repeat the same color more than two times in a row. Okay, two more inches to go. And um, Kathy, you can use seed beads. You could use um, size eights would give you a very similar look or Size sixes would give you a little bit of a finer. Oh, no, the other way around. Size sixes would give you a similar look. They're pretty close in size to the four millimeter. And then size eights would give you a finer um, design. Oh, looks like I made a mistake here. So you see, I just pulled it out and they just popped right off. So I'm going to, I had forgot to do the loop in between or the stitch in between. And you can see pretty quickly when things don't look right and correct it. I 
I've also used uh, peanut seed beads and crocheted with peanut seed beads. That was fun. Okay, let's see, four more beads here. So every, with the four millimeter polish, every four beads equals one inch. So that's how I know I need four more beads here. So you're doing a stitch without a bead and then a stitch with the bead. And the last one here, and then I will show you guys how to finish the design by adding on the button. And I'm going to end it with one last loop. I give myself about six inches of thread afterwards. I'm going to trim this and set my little extra beads aside. And now you're going to take your thread and pull it through the loop. So it went through the last loop and it now has a nice little knot. And now I'm going to grab my very bent up big eye needle <laughs> and thread the Ceylon through the needle again. I'm going to take my button and I'm going to wrap, I mean, I'm going to go in and out of the button holes two times. So pull that nice and tight. I'm going to go back through the button holes one more time. And now I'm going to tie a knot underneath the, um, the last bead here. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to tie two more knots around my thread underneath the button. So just wrapping this around and doing a regular little knot. Kind of showing you what I'm doing there. So just doing a regular little knot around the um, cord well, about three times. Okay, and now don't get scared. I, if you have a thread zapper, use your thread zapper. I do not have a thread zapper. Nor do I have a store nearby that sells one. So I have my little candle lighter here and I'm just getting to the very edge of the thread and it just um, curls onto itself. And if you don't wanna do that, you can do some um, beading thread. The, I can't remember the name of the beading thread. Just look up beading thread and you'll see what I mean. Okay, now this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I have my, um, my end here. I'm going to take and wrap this around underneath the loop. Make sure it goes on top of your bead and pull it nice and tight. I'm going to do that two times. And again, they make this really cool little bead zapper, I mean thread zapper, <laughs> that isn't live, I mean uh, a flame, if that scares you. Because it scares me a little. Now this, I think this looks a little messy. So 
I'm going to grab a little four millimeter bead cover that Vintage sells. Let me find one here. Digging through my bead stash. If you have any questions, now is um, it's not E6000, Lisa. It's um, hypo, hypo cement is the beading thread. Um, 6000 is good for metal, but the hypo cement works best for beadwork. And um, here we go. I'm going to open this up with my pliers. I have my thumb in here and I'm pressing to open up this little bead cap. I mean, a uh, bead cover. Get that nice and opened. I'm going to stick it over the knot here. Have that covered up nice and camouflaged. No one knows except for me and you. grab my parallel pliers which works the best with this and close that up and there we go now it's all hidden away underneath the little bead there okay and now I'm going to take my two charms that I have. Here I have a heart and a little, um, I don't know what kind of charm we would call the other one. <laughs> and I'm going to find the center of my design. And I'm going to add them on the center. Or if you wanted to see how this is going to lay on your hand. You could wrap it around the three times if I wanted to have it next to the clasp, which hey, I think I'll do that. So it'll be a little off center. If you were to put it directly center from the clasp, then it could be a necklace or a bracelet, depending on how you're feeling. So it's one of those dual dual action <laughs> pieces and um, I had had these put on an earlier one that I was practicing and ended up tearing apart so <laughs> the jump rings are on and closed which wouldn't normally happen okay and you're just gonna slip this uh, this is a little five millimeter jump ring on here and it slips right between the two beads and doesn't go anywhere. So that's why I like to use these little five millimeter jump rings for this project. And then I'm going to put the next one right next to it. Or you could do them on the same one if you wanted to have them layered. Maybe I'll do that. I kind of like that look. Slip this on. And close that up. And then I have my two little charms here on the bracelet. And so when I wear it, I'll just put it on right now. And this is three strands because I didn't want to bore you with another eight inches of bead crochet. Mm -hmm. 
Ooh, putting a bracelet on by myself. That's uh, I should get a, a cookie for this. <laughs> Here, let's slip that through and then just layer those however you'd like them to go. They can be on the top or hang on the bottom. I kind of like the top look here. Here we go. Oh, I have uh, the shirt you put your thumbs in, you know, so you can be a cool kid. <laughs> but um, that's it. That's the design. And then this, uh, this larger one that I did, this one was 30, um, 34 inches. No, eight times four. <laughs> However much that is. And uh, I put the charms right on the center here. So you could wear this as a necklace if you wanted to or wrap it around as a bracelet. <laughs> well, Lisa, the project wasn't potato. The, uh, the filming quality of my first video was, <laughs> I don't think I had a, a microphone or lights. I was just with my phone at my kitchen table and uh, that's how that went. Yeah. So super fun. It's a little challenging if you're not used to bead crochet, so give yourself some grace and patience when it comes to learning the new technique. But once you get it, it's just going to click and you'll be able to do it pretty quickly. And if you wanted, um, I'll post the link. I, I'll post the link to my first video that I did and I showed some more examples with necklaces. And I think I did... Um, more stitches in between each bead so that they were a little um, a little more thread than beads and so that was a fun different little um different way to do it so i'll share that video link with you guys too on my facebook page but yeah super fun we'll have the new um buttons tomorrow on the website I'm not going to put anything else um on the website today and then i think i'm going to do a few kits to well like partial kits with uh i'm going to do a few color combinations of the fire polish beads with the buttons for you guys and so i know you guys like when i pick out the colors for you <laughs> and then you'll just have to um you'll have to uh get your ceylon thread you have a harder time with the smaller needle do you mean the uh, crochet hook because you could, I, I really think you could do it um, a step bigger if you're talking about that. And then if you're talking about the needle needle, these big eye needles are quite awesome because they just open up completely. <laughs> and you guys, you can pick this up at um, Michael's Craft Store, Bead Store, wherever you buy your beads. You can even order them from Kate at beadshop.com when you order your thread she has i'm sure she has the big eye needles there too all right guys yes i i am gonna do these color combinations for you guys and then i have um one in teal too that i, I think would be fun to share with you guys so yes so much fun it's just um it's, it's a really comfortable bracelet to wear too it, even though it has a little bit of weight with the metal, it's still really lightweight and comfortable to wear. And uh, just a little bit of sparkle and pretty for your wrist. And if you like to stack bracelets, this is a great little stackable bracelet. Oh, okay, you have a hard time grabbing the crochet. Yeah, try, try one step bigger. It doesn't have to be this tiny. And also, the guys, they make crochet hooks that have like... Um, a bigger handle on it like a like a rubberized handle so that um, if you have a hard time holding a smaller object the bigger handle makes it a little more comfortable on your hands too all right guys that's it I will see you on Friday for our coffee break and again tomorrow I'm gonna say at four o'clock I will list the new beads 
the buttons and the little inspiration crochet kits. You'll have to get your own thread and um, and your crochet hook, but everything else will be in the little kit. <laughs> Laura, I think the best way to work on your confidence for this is just to try it. And um, you could always just try a double strand and do 16 inches or whatever your um, size wrist would be. If you wear size seven, then you would do 14 inches. And you could just try a, a small one to start with or 21 inches, yeah. But definitely just give it a try. Um, the nice thing is if you mess it up and you hate it, you can just pull the thread and the whole thing will unravel <laughs> until you tie that knot. You are you got a, quite a bit of freedom to play around and, um, you know, it's just beads. They'll come apart and you can try it again. All right, guys, I will see you on Friday.